folks standing in for our grandparents to join us. Um, I remember a couple of the parishioners always saying that, that they always got invited to be part of Grandparent Day because their grandparents either were deceased or lived out of town and couldn't make this celebration, so they would come to, to gather with children. So in a special way, as we gather in prayer, we remember our grandparents. Those here we are grateful for, and those that are deceased, we pray as they share an eternal life with Open our hearts today, uh, joining into this Eucharist, our saint today is St. Catherine of Siena, a mystic, a holy woman that entered so deeply into the relationship, into the presence of Christ. We recognize our challenge to be present with Christ. At times, we've turned away from Christ and we have sinned. So for our sins, we seek our Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you are our Redeemer. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light in the darkness of our world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who sent St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love, in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exalt in the revelation of his glory, may revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us turn our attention to our scripture reading today. Keep in mind, we're in the season of Easter. We're hearing in the Acts of the Apostles different events of the early church um, coming alive. And particularly today, it's a time of persecution in the church. Um, if you were to stand up and say if you were a Catholic, um, you'd be in trouble. For Even for your life, you'd need to run. And so we listen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made a loud lament over him. Saul, meanwhile, was trying to destroy the church. Entering a house after house, dragging out men and women, he handed them over for imprisonment. Now those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Thus Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, for unclean spirits, crying out in loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed and crippled people were cured. There was great joy in the city. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life, and whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. Because I have come down from heaven, not to do the will, uh, not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life. And I shall ra raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. And I totally get that that's Jesus speaking to the people. The bread of life is the Eucharist, is the very presence of Jesus Christ. And in receiving that, we'll never hunger. Um, and, and it's part of our faith, part of our belief, and, and I yearn for the day when we gather again as a group uh, for Mass and share in the bread of life and in Jesus Christ. One of the closest things to that, uh, coming and never hungering, is visiting grandparents, isn't it? Do you ever go to your grandparents and, and go home starving hungry? Oh, definitely not. Did you ever go and not get something sweet? I remember visiting my great-grandmother, and my, my great-grandmother, her name was Carrie, and visited her, and she had this glass candy dish uh, with a cover, you know, a little, a little glass peak on the cover and they picked off. And, of course, we'd visit great-grandmother, um, and sometimes it would be with my grandmother, Irene, that we'd go over to, it would be her mother to visit because uh, they always did this coffee thing in the afternoon. So that was always a time. That it wasn't about drinking coffee. It was about getting a piece of candy from that, that unique glass candy dish. And uh, you can imagine my mother's worry in that, you know, of course, one of the kids had to walk around the, the room with that glass candy dish. My God, take off that cover, you could break it and walk around with that dish. Um, and that was one of the highlights, uh, butterscotch, uh, the, the little butterscotch ones that you in the individual wrap, you pull off and you suck. That's what was my favorite coming out of that. But I, I recall and I remember that about the visit about that piece of sweet. And after my great-grandmother passed away, that candy dish went to my grandmother. And sometime along the way, my grandmother, I, when I think I had an apartment or something after college, gave me that candy dish. And lo and behold, one day, guess what happened? I dropped the cover and it broke. But what good is the candy dish when great-grandma wasn't there to fill it? What good was the dish when it wasn't about the dish any longer? It was about the memory. It was about the candy that was in there. It was about the love of sharing that, of never leaving hungry. At least you'd have that piece of candy. That's the kind of sense we want us to connect to the gospel today. I also want to connect that in many other ways to our grandparents. Remember, my grandmother made Kringle. Do you know what Kringle is? And if you don't, you need to go look it up. You need to, you need to ask somebody what it is. Um, Grandma would make Kringle. You know, and, and Kringle always had a filling on the inside of it. I think that was a, a bohemian thing. I think if bohemian or Danish. Um, and then if you were the other one, you made klotches. Kind of the same thing, but different shape, different way. And if you were on my dad's side, Belgian, then it was Belgian pies. Um, same kind of thing. Some kind of a doughy crust with a, a filling in it. Of, of It could be, um, could be any number of things that would have been the filling inside of that. But always that pastry, that bit of sweetness, that bit of shared love in eating and sharing with that. And so we want to connect that especially today to our gospel, that bread of life. As grandparents share that food, as we yearn for that, and I'm sure for many uh, that have grandparents that right now during this pandemic is not a time to visit them. And unfortunately, we can't share always in that joy of that food. 
But I want to challenge you today as, as part of coming together in prayer, in a special way to reach out to your grandparents. Um, and this would not be a day to send them an email. This would be a day to call them on the phone or write them a real letter that takes a stamp to put on to mail to them. Because after all, what do they have to put on the refrigerator these days from grandchildren art if we're not sending them anything? But today, to be a day to, to specially to connect with them and, and to yearn for that presence. And, and for that food, because if you also remember, if I remember correctly, that traditionally we did this Grandparent Day Mass on Friday so that school could be done just before lunch, so that you could go for lunch with your grandparents. Now, I'd love to encourage that today, but I realize that we can't really do that today. We're going to have to take a rain check on that. But still making that connection with our grandparents and awaiting that day, just like we await that day for the bread of life, the, to receive the Eucharist, to gather again as a community, we are not only to gather with our grandparents, but with the very uh, community of faith and belief, and to share in the body and the blood of Christ. And so allow ourselves to yearn for that, for our grandparents, and especially for Jesus. And, it, um, and so let's open our hearts further to that today, as, as we pray for that day of returning, as we pray for the wonderful gift of grandparents, and if our grandparents are deceased, Pray that they share an eternal life with Christ. And so let us rise. Let us lift up the needs and prayers in our hearts and these spoken um, to our God. For Catholic missionaries, may God give them the strength and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For judges and all who work in law enforcement, may God, the perfect judge, bless them with the gifts of wisdom, justice, and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bear the burdens of loneliness, infirmity, poverty, or lack of basic necessities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children in this community, May the Holy Spirit help them grow in grace and knowledge of God's saving power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, may Jesus accept them to himself and bring them to everlasting life, remembering especially Sophie Busha Bravelsky. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us also pray for our grandparents, for the if they're deceased, that they share an eternal life with Christ, and for those that are living, that we may uh, continue to enjoy that relationship and connect with them more fully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's also pray for an end to this time of, for the end of this pandemic, for an end um, uh, of this time of, of separation, that we may gather together again to receive the real body and blood of Christ in the Word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Together, let us pray our St. Joseph prayer. Good St. Joseph. As you led the Holy Family, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our Bishop, and our Priest. May they follow your humble example in their church, in their fatherly care of the people of God, the church. With Mary, you raised up Jesus the high priest. You know our needs for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and our grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good St. Joseph, pray, pray for, for us. us.
Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that instructed by her teaching, we may give her more fervent thanks for to you to the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time alone, all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
with St. Catherine of Siena, with St. Francis of Assisi, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command formed by divine teaching we dare to say our, our father, father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and ever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. And today as we offer each other this sign of peace, I'm going to invite you into a quiet moment, thinking of all your classmates and those that we would normally have gathered with. And in our hearts, we share that peace with them, and we also share that peace in a special way with our grandparents. Him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please pray with us now the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Love. 
Let us pray. The heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, but an encouragement to, to grandparents to be uh, people, to be grandparents uh, continually encouraging and inviting uh, your children and grand, especially grandchildren, deeper into the faith and sharing in the faith. Sorry about remembering my grandmother, Irene. Um, after I graduated from college and I was working in Minnesota, when I'd come back for the holidays, uh, my folks were dairy farmers. So if I went and stayed on the farm, I was getting up early in the morning, doing chores, milking cows, doing all that. You know, why am I working full time and coming home uh, for uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas and then doing barn chores? So grandma invited me to stay with her. I thought that was a good idea. So I'd stay with her. Um, and uh, like I'd come home for Thanksgiving, so I'd get home on, on that Wednesday night kind of late. And of course, you know, they had later morning mass on Thursday morning at her church. And then I'd stay there Thursday night and Friday morning. She's like, well, um, she always went to daily mass. So invited me to go along because we would go out for breakfast afterward with her lady friends. I thought, well, that's a good idea. And mass was at some early hour, like 7.30 in the morning. So I thought, but that's okay. We can leave the house at 7.20, 7.23, get there and plan through. Oh, no, no, no. Grandma had a tradition. You had to leave before that because you had to get the parking spot in front of church. Not only did you have to get that front parking spot, you had to be there in time to pray a rosary before Mass started. We were leaving the house at 7 a.m. for 7.30 Mass. And it was only 10, 12 blocks away, but it included breakfast afterward. But it was a way of, of just continuing uh, growing in prayer and in faith. So inspiration to the grandparents to be that uh, grandparent, inviting them, inviting grandchildren deeper into prayer in special ways. I invite everyone to have a good day. Um, join us at 4 p.m. on live feed here on our Facebook page for uh, prayer time with, uh, I believe it'll be uh, Father Jose and Father Bill tonight, praying the rosary and then the breviary, the office of the church. And then also if you want to join us at 5 p.m. in the grand parking lot for uh, parking lot adoration and confessions in the church, welcome to also do that. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.